Hi, Ryan Goodson here with New Moon Telescopes. Today I would like to discuss a little about collimating your Newtonian reflector. More specifically, your New Moon Telescope, let's hope. But if you have your own Newtonian, let's go ahead and show you how to align those light paths so you've got a great image whenever you're looking through your telescope. Now, once you've set up, every time you go out, you would like to collimate your Newtonian reflector. This takes no more than three to five minutes once you get pretty good at it. So I'll discuss everything we're doing from start to finish. So we have our telescope set up. The first thing I like to do is make sure that the secondary mirror is perfectly centered in the upper cage. Now, whenever I build a telescope, I ensure that this happens. But if you have one that's not made by New Moon Telescopes, you'll want to make sure that that secondary mirror is centered in your upper cage. Now, if it's slightly off center, you can live with that and still adjust your light paths to be centered. So don't worry too much if it's just slightly off centered. But we'll make sure that that secondary mirror is centered to our focuser after that. And to do that, I use a Cheshire eyepiece. Inside this eyepiece, there's crosshairs that are perfectly centered in here. And I will make sure my secondary mirror has a center mark. We'll do another video on how to center mark your secondary mirror another day. But whenever your secondary mirror is center marked, you'll slide your Cheshire eyepiece in, tighten it down, and as you look through here, you'll make sure those crosshairs are perfectly in the middle of that center mark. And I look in and I can see, yes, I am centered. So I'll take out my Cheshire eyepiece, and I'll also take out my 1.25 inch adapter, because I use mostly two inch eyepieces, and I'm gonna use a two inch collimator to ensure that my life paths are aligned. So here we have a simple laser collimator. It's not a holographic type, it's just a simple red beam. It's made by Astro Systems. They do a great job on their collimators. So I'll slide this in the focuser, tighten the focuser down, and from here, I'm going to adjust the tilt of the secondary mirror to send that laser beam to the middle of the primary mirror. To do this, all I use is a little Allen wrench. Now on the secondary mirror, there's four small bolts. Sometimes there's only gonna be three, so just look at your telescope. And it's a push-pull mechanism that changes the tilt of the secondary mirror. So I'll look down the tube, and I can see that the beam going to the primary mirror is slightly above the center mark on the mirror itself. So that means my top bolt on this secondary mirror needs to go in to tilt that beam down. So. A slight turn there. Now I'm gonna to go to the opposite screw. Slightly loosen it. Now I'll go to the one to the right of it. I like to try to give even pressure to each screw. There's four screws in here, and if I just focus on two or three of them, that can kinda of mean that one is barely making contact, so your secondary mirror can shift through the night. We don't want that. couple more tweaks. Okay, now I can see that my beam is perfectly centered. I'll go to the back of the telescope and I'll focus on tilting the primary mirror now to send that beam back to the middle of the secondary mirror. So to do that, we'll turn the telescope around. it all the way over so we have a good view. There's three collimation knobs. On most telescopes out there, there are going to be three collimation knobs. Now, by releasing and tightening these, there's a, that beam is coming, hitting the middle of that primary mirror, and I can see two red dots right now on the secondary mirror. I want to take those two red dots and basically merge them. So I'll slightly loosen, slightly tighten each of these bolts once again. I like to try to give even pressure to each bolt, so if I slightly loosen one, I might slightly tighten the other just to see what it does. Um, typically you're going to have to do a little bit more on one bolt, but once you've got those two light beams merged, that means that now your primary mirror and your secondary mirror are aligned. So ideally from this point you've got a perfectly collimated telescope. However, I like to use a star image to make sure that my optics are perfect. When I view, I want a perfect image, so I like to make sure everything is as perfect as possible. 
So to do this, I'll wait until dark and I'll take a 9 or a 10 millimeter eyepiece. I'll put it into the focuser and I'll point the telescope at Polaris, especially if you're using a telescope that doesn't track. You don't want to constantly have to move your telescope as you're collimating. So once I point the telescope at Polaris, I put that 9 or 10 millimeter eyepiece in, I'll get Polaris in the middle of the field of view and I'll defocus the image just slightly. So as you start defocusing that image, you'll see that the star starts sending slightly round rings around the middle. Usually I like to get three, four, maybe five rings. Now those rings, if your, if your telescope is perfectly collimated, those rings are going to be perfectly concentric. They're going to be perfectly round. If that star is perfectly in the middle of your field of view, so be sure that it's right in the middle of the field of view, defocus the image slightly, and make sure those rings are perfectly round. If they're not, then you have a problem and you need to slightly do your collimation tweaks. Now whenever I do those slight tweaks, I'll go back to the bottom of the primary mirror and I'll use these three bolts right here to make sure my image is perfectly collimated. Now there are different aberrations you can notice on a defocused star and one is astigmatism. There's all kinds of things you can pick up. Now for more information on that, I would strongly recommend David Souter's book, How to Star Test Astronomical Telescopes. In that book, you'll learn all you need to know about looking at a star and star testing. However, for right now, we just want as perfectly round rings as we can get around those stars. From this point on, you're going to be ready to observe with a perfectly collimated telescope. Thanks so much for watching.